السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ السلام um i thought it was understood but i didn't announce the uh you know in the previous session i did not announce that we'll have one on thursday um today maybe we can make consultation on that and we can uh, moving forward we can uh, we can do that that we will uh, announce the time ahead of time so how is everyone doing alhamdulillah how about you brother oh, alhamdulillah uh, it's the blessing of allah that we are able to do such such a thing um so right now time is 8:15 uh, so there are a few more people joining so if you don't mind we'll uh, chit chat in the meantime and let more people join inshallah mm-hmm. Mohammed and my mom yeah we're here today so how assalamu alaikum yeah wa alaikum assalam it looks like my buddy mohammed is there with you Yeah, yes. <laughs> Bye-bye, Muhammad. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Are you all getting used to working from home? Alhamdulillah. And the salli ala rasooli al-kareem. A'uz billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm very grateful to you, every one of you that mashallah you were uh, able to join on such a sh- short notice now just few things before we start um uh, i mean uh, do we have a consent here that is a good idea to do uh, these this uh, halaka maybe twice a week uh, giving, giving the condition that we are not a, Am I, okay so i mean is it okay if we do it twice a week or do you think twice a week is too much how well, i have i have no problem with it last time i i totally forgot <laughs> i'm sorry about it um i personally believe the more we do it especially in this time and condition and what we are right now i think is better for us and let me explain to you what is my intention and uh, why am i initiating this and uh, and putting a lot of emphasis on having it is this is one way for us to first of all collectively that uh, when rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has to pick a task he used to pick the easy one and what i mean by that is this in that yes inshallah we need to do individual ibadah but collective ibadah is also very important and is in my opinion is very easy to do because we're all together and we do this and it doesn't make uh, make you uh, it doesn't burden you too much right so that's one point the second point is um, that this is not about uh, me talking i want to make it a open forum for everyone meaning that uh, today the format i have picked is that i have chosen three people to speak uh, is one of is me and then there is two more people who are going to talk about uh, the, some verses and in moving forward in the future i ask every one of you to volunteer that if you want to talk about something and you don't have to be a scholar or a very learned person to talk about it you can pick some verses which you would like to share with others and just read the translation and maybe express your feelings about those verses that's one of the things so so and the other thing is this is another way of us to communicate with each other because we have been stuck in our homes and we haven't seen each other we are not socializing so that's another way of letting our inner feelings out so that we can relieve some of the stress and share what's in our mind on our minds so with that i'm going to open the mics again and let you guys give me some feedback regarding it so auz billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillah ar rahmanir rahim ما اصاب من مصيبه الا باذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهد قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم not to strike any disaster except by the permission of allah and whoever believes in allah he guides his heart and allah is all knowing of everything so the meaning is no disaster strike except by permission of allah and whoever believes in allah he will guide his heart 
and Allah is knowing of all things. So I was reading about this verse and pondering on it. So what we can get out of this verse is that that right now we are going through one of those uh, situations where we are feeling helpless and we are completely on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we can hold on to our faith in difficult times, then at the end of that, we get a gift because of that patience and that gift is priceless. And if you are trying to guess what that gift is, that Allah himself is going to will guide the hearts of these people who stay steadfast and patient in this time. So if we remain peaceful and with uh, with and have tran tranquility of having faith, then we are the, we are going to be the successful ones. So trust and the positive attitude is very important at this time. So with that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is also in advising us. That wa ati Allah wa ati Rasul. That we need so obey Allah and obey the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if we don't do that, fa in tawallaytum fa inna ma ala Rasulina Rasulina al balagul mubin. Then, but if you turn away, then upon our Messenger is is only the duty of clear notification. So it's so important that not only we have trust and faith during this time what we do the necessary that we believe we uh, we obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commandments of uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is our pathway to success now there are times that when a person will let go of the trust of allah and that will be a very drastic situation and it's mainly because they start to think that they don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are able to manage their affairs. And that is a very, very, um, for a moment, for a faithful person, that will be a disastrous situation. So we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allahu la ilaha illahu wa alallahi fal yatawakkilil mu'minun that uh, mu'minun, uh, Allah, there is no God except him and upon Allah, the believers put their trust. So again, the message I am taking from this verse and sharing with you guys that in this time of situation we were dealing with, we need to have full trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay positive and follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, return to him in repentance uh, and, and seek forgiveness and we follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu and Inshallah, we put all our trust in Him, and we will be successful. With that, um, there is one more uh, verse I want to hear with you, which is a little bit different from this verse, and it talks about the family life yeah brother mashallah this is uh, <clears throat> surah taqaban is a very very a good surah um, and mashallah it's uh, very well suited in the environment mm -hmm. um, whatever we are going through is all there you know yeah mashallah jazakallah khair okay so um, i have one more verse to share with you guys and then uh, i'll give the uh, the mic to sister nosheen so this one, this verse is from Surah Al-Munafikun. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying, "Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an zikrillah." That O oh, you who believe, let not divert your wealth and not your children from the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa ma'in yafal yafal zalika fa ulai kahumul khasirun, and whoever does that then those are the losers. So what does that mean? Uh, I was again reading about this, um, this verse and listening to the scholar. So the question is this, that don't let your, uh, the, the situation on hand is that don't let your money and children take away, you, take you away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the true reality of our life that we are so busy with these two things that we are not able to have the right balance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the worldly life. 
so then it it makes it should make you make uh, us ponder that how much time we are spending thinking about allah or allah's deen versus uh, our children and money am i focused on my plans for the next 10 years um am i praying regularly i, I am but I, am i remembering allah while i'm praying so the chances are that it is very hard to remember Allah even in the Salah. So I have to make effort to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even then, it is hard to stay focused. But when it comes to the worldly things like money, our wealth, and our children, and our wives, and families, we remember them by default. We don't have to put any effort in remembering them because they're always there in front of us. So the remembrance of Allah is very important, and especially at the given time. So what are we supposed to do? Should we take this ayah and now abandon our wealth and families? Or what is the message here? So the scholars are guiding us in the right direction that no, the, the point here is that we need to have a balance in our lives. So we are not too um, obsessed with our families and wealth. And we are not, uh, you know, and, and we let the deen go altogether. We need to have that we should give the due right to everything. So we should be focused on our deen. And at the same time, uh, the most important institution in our Islam is the family. And the, uh, the challenge on hand we have as a Muslim family that right now we are lacking uh, this uh, control. We are, we are not like good parents or we are not able to lead our families in the right direction. So we need to find, find a way to, uh, to balance things. At this moment, we are failing to raise children properly. And the reasons are that most of us has a lack of time. We have too much on our plate. We have too much stress. And the list goes on. Uh, and uh, we realize that we ourselves are not following the best life. So how can we even manage our kids? So we are lacking a quality relationship with our kids. So with the, uh, the situation on hand, the, the way I want to relate this problem with our current situation is that, that Alhamdulillah now, whether we liked it or not, we, are, we have the extra time on hand and we have, an, we have a golden opportunity to inshallah focus and make create this balance that we do we give due rights to our deen to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time uh, what we have been neglecting all this time we give the focus back to our families and get our children on the right track and first we get ourselves on the track first as parents and then expect our children to to go on on the uh, right path so with that, uh, Jazakallah Khair, I'm just going to give the uh, control over to Sister Nosheen. And she would like to talk, talk about Surah Hujrat. Sister Nosheen. Namadhun, Sallilin Kareem, Amma Baad, Pauzu Billahi, Minash Shaitan, Rajeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Rabbi Shwali Sabri, Wa Yasirli, Amri, Rahma Lukta, Kammi, Nisani, Aqtau, Qawli. Jazakallah khairan kaseera brother Avit letting me have this opportunity and um, today I picked randomly Surah Al-Hujrat this is chapter 49 I picked uh, this um, like you know we had been so busy in our life like day in, in day out we were busy involved with so many uh, things of this dunya we had very little chance pondering upon the ayats so it just came across to me that you know Allah has said something so beautiful in this uh, chapter so I am referring to uh, verses 11 and then I'll move back to verse 12 so in verse 11 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Ya uh, amanu la tas la yas so I'll stop here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that Ya Yuhannasi. 
Yeah, last than it's, it's it's this verse, uh, this chapter is towards the end of Prophet's life. Like, you know, when Allah SWT had given us so many uh, instructions, like, you know, he said, now Allah thinks that, you know, right, uh, our, the Iman is in our heart now, in, in the Kulu, not just uh, we have accepted Islam, but now uh, Deen is in our heart when Allah SWT is addressing us here directly. Ya uh, oh who are you believers, right? So it's an hukum from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is guiding us towards one of the etiquette. What? What that is? That uh, men should not make fun of uh, another group of men. When Allah says here, khawman, uh, khawman here, uh, normally it would mean both men and women equally, everyone is involved. But uh, when he says here, Hamon, it is only for men. How we know that? Because next in next part of this ayah, Allah says again, Wala nisa'un um mina nisa'i. So he is separately telling about male right now, that men should not make fun of a uh, group of men. Because it is important message. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing separately. First for male and then for female. We see that when men in a group, it's it's like, you know, this simple ayah, but so important. Like when uh, it is, you know, already, we know already. When, when men are in a group, they obviously jokes around, make fun. Allah subhanahu wa doesn't say that. What kind of, you know, joke? Is Allah says that you know don't make fun of, <laughs> and then similarly Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about female that uh, female should not make fun of another group of female. When they are together again, we see that you know when women get together, they make fun of. This is also like you know suggest that uh, you know in Islam uh, uh, mixed gathering is. Not allowed. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is how separately he is addressing men and women. <clears throat> then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Why?" Uh, he continues here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that I yakunu khairan khairan min home because we don't know. Allah knows, and like you know, who is better? Maybe he is better than us that we are making fun of. Perhaps that they may be better than them means from those who make fun of making fun of someone else is actually you know hurting someone's feeling we don't know and this the term is used as yet and that if that happens we cannot have you know, if people keep making uh, like you know fun making fun of one another so Allah, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a guideline that you know to have a healthy society healthy community we should respect one another so like, you know, we will not, uh, nobody would come uh, forward to do deans works if you are, you know, pulling less for uh, one another. That's why in the previous verses, we have learned that if uh, you see any misunderstanding or confusion or conflict between two groups, you are supposed to do sula. You patch up with them. So how people ridicule or make fun of people? You know, the question arises, oh, what, what do you mean? Where, what is the guideline? We know that ridiculing or making fun of other is a characteristic, typical characteristic of monarchy. If we, we have read the Sirah of Prophet Muhammad how when you would sit down in a gathering, you would try to say things, you know, what Allah SWT has revealed, there would be a group of people who would make fun of him. Either in the, in the group, they would just, you know, uh, tease or, you know, with eye contact, they, they used to make fun of. And sometimes they would just leave the gathering and go outside and make fun of. That's how they used to make. So we know that making fun is a characteristic of uh, Munafiqin. So we know that during the uh, by the book, when uh, poor people were to, giving charity, they didn't have enough, but they used to give a little bit, whatever little bit they had, but these people made fun of them. So that's another way of, but our, our dean doesn't approve of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we see that, you know, a student make fun of their teacher, you know, that's not allowed. They call them with these certain names. So this is again fun. 
naming someone with you know which is not then Allah subhanahu wa says wala tanmizu an fusakum wala tanabazu bil alqab see Allah subhanahu wa is giving another expression now tanmizu do not insult or taunt you know there's another word called taan you know, English doesn't have enough vocabulary uh, one another Yasqa means ridiculing, making fun of someone. It's a word that comes from Yasqa. Making, thinking someone happy, you know, less privileged. And that's like, you know, making fun. So Allah says, do not make fun. Perhaps he's better than uh, Minhum from uh, you know, other. We don't know. In the eyes of Allah, he is better, maybe. Muqam, his Muqam is higher. Now, ridiculing is not just by using words, it could be by others' action, by gesture, by pointing out how, like, you know, nowadays, nowadays this is so, so very common, you know, when you just pick up your WhatsApp, you see that, you know, means have been creating, you know, and you just forward, forwarded message one after the other without knowing where this message is going to circulate. And that person may not know that, you know, he has been made fun of. So that means it's one of the ways, you know, people make fun of in, in this current situation, what we see every day. So we know that Allah SWT did not make something, you know, uh, while others, uh, like, you know, nobody is sane. You know, some are good at something, while others are good at something else. Why is the difference? Why is not everybody is just uh, like, you know, super duper? Allah has... We have, like, you know, there is difference. And why? We learned from our Quran only that we help each other. Even we, uh, we know that just to help another, if you have some, some mal, if you have some talent, so we, we exchange. That's how we help each other. That's why we are not the same. Like, just like our, we have five fingers and they are not same. Some are different in size, some are stronger, so that why we have it, uh, the five fingers different, so that we have a good grip. That's the reason, right? To so make it uh, possible to work. The same way Allah made us all different, physically, intellectually, financially, but that does not mean we should point out uh, others' short, uh, shortcomings. That's why Allah SWT is stopping us from doing it. Even at home, like, you know, sometimes we see that uh, mothers sometimes, like, you know, they have got two or three children and one is not that intelligent and she just says it uh, bluntly, like, you know, you are, you know, usually, you know, say things like, oh, he's my child is just dumb, this and that. You should not. That hurts someone's feeling. Uh, and at that point, maybe you took it lightly, but that child has taken it. He might go under into any kind of depression, you don't know. So we have to make sure that we don't do such things. Now, why people even do that? Why someone make fun of that person? You know, there, there could be, you know, there is a complexity. When a person wants to show his uh, superiority and make others feel inferior, people do that. Such people you will find on and off in, in you know, they will be commenting. They will find faults on others all the time. And, you know, this is some, like, you know, it's a co kind of complexity, maybe. That's why they do it. There could be another reason, like, he's jealous. When they see something good about someone, he or she doesn't uh, like it. So they make fun of about in front of others. That's when another way, you know, why people make fun of. That's why Allah SWT says, Wala tanzimu anfusakum. And do not insult yourself. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying anfusako? Yourself. He could have said that of others. Um, the word talmizu is uh, from the word derived from lams. It applies to ridiculing, revealing, jeering, like, you know, charging somebody of, like, you know, finding fault with him or targeting someone. These are the, term, the words as finding fault on his physical appearance behavioral issue instead of going to the uh, read uh, redirecting that child uh, the person they make fun so if you want to make uh, you know correct you go and redirect it to the person even sometimes people make fun of someone 
what he was uh, like you know uh, what he was in the past you know he was he maybe like you know he was he had some bad character now he has learned the and he has uh, given up those things but if somebody still calls him you know like somebody used to steal and you call it chore you know, that's not okay that's another way of you know ridiculing oh you used to be like that and so and so we know you you have been like that so this is not okay to say like uh, we know from uh, the history when we do see uh, did sirat hazrat safiya razila ta'ala anha she was a daughter of jew and somebody called her uh, the daughter of jew that was she, she obviously her, her feeling must have been hurt then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say wala tanawizu bil alqab what is alqab now there is another word right it comes from the word laqab laqab means giving someone a bad name calling someone with bad name it also means calling somebody with such a name that he doesn't like it or he get annoyed deen our deen does not allow that a person should not be called by a name or a title which may cause him humiliation if i'm calling somebody uh, like you know a hypocrite or uh, like a sinner or something calling someone lame someone blind or or giving him a nickname containing uh, like in a reference to some something you know we should we cannot give enough of see this is not uh, something this is allah's hukum allah says here it's the alqab title right a name or laqab with uh, describes his quality you can give a good laqab like you know there are bad laqabs there are good, good laqabs and if you, when you say a uh, good uh, title right title you can say for example hazrat isa alaihi salam was, was given a laqab of masi because why because he used to go around uh, conveying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message that's why he used to masi he used to travel for you know and uh, giving uh, preaching and he also used to you know he would he could cure blind by just touching uh, touching the word must must if the word comes from us he must mean by touching the blind uh, he would give uh, no he will get his eyesight back that's why he's called masi he's also called ya ibn maryam that means he was his laqab was ibn maryam so laqab can be good or bad you can give a good laqab if you want we can call someone alim katib this is okay but nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam also used to give uh, laqab but he used to give good laqab someone gives a bad laqab that's not okay now giving going back to wala wala tal mizu anfusahu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here you do not insult yourself why is this anfusahu yourself your nafs you know why because we know a mumin is a brother of another mumin so when you insult other you actually insult yourself there is a hadith i am going to just say the mufhum of it the mufhum of which is when a person blames someone of like you know uh, saying kuf he is a kufar or fasik it will definitely back, come like you know bounce back to that person if he is not a kufar or fasik do you get it says that you know uh, the mufhum of it is if you are calling someone Uh, something and he is not then it is coming back to you self bounces back to you how that is possible so um like you know we also know that when you say something call somebody with name or curse someone the word uh, it's like you know i have heard if i am not uh, if i'm not correct then please correct me later on when you are going to criticize or comment not right now i want to say add here that you know then something you call somebody with a name or curse someone the word travels around in the air looking for that person whom we have used such word such term 
Then he looks around right and left when he doesn't find that person who has been said just called with that name. What happens? It comes back to his own self. That means you are cursing yourself. Just think, if I call somebody, we do without thinking, you know, this is so like, you know, I'm myself, including myself, you know, sometimes we just say it uh, randomly. We don't even realize what we are saying. Oh, he's a liar. It's so common, right? He's a liar. He did not. I do. Like, you know, if he is not a liar, what happens? Oh, he's a liar. But if he's not a liar, what happens? That we are calling ourselves a liar. Mm. If he's not, that means you are doing a bhagavad you know, rebirth. Yeah. Similarly, if we do something givat, okay, backbiting, we harm our own self, our nafs. That's why anpusaha. And eventually we do not have what happens. You're calling something like that and what happens? You lose your self-respect even. You are calling, you know, you keep on going. Then you have this in your... Uh, all the time, you know. Jazakallah, so, session. Are, are you still? You gonna continue? Uh, I don't know. I have uh, tons of things to say. If I want okay. to. No, let's because uh, it's almost nine o'clock. Uh, do you want to finish? The, can do you? You want to finish the ayah and then now? Uh, yes, have... I will just finish the ayah. Yeah. Okay. Allah Taala says here uh, about the woman. Then he says you are doing it for yourself. And then Allah Taala says, do not insult yourself because when you are doing it, you are doing it yourself. And then don't do not call people billahab again. This is again something. And then um. Uh, then don't call people uh, al uh, fusu means don't call somebody fast badal imana and then Allah says if you do that you will be called a fasik after having iman you call like that you will be called a fasik that we don't want to be called like that right when and uh, woman and whoever does not uh, repent like you know whatever ever happened in the past that's okay we do tawa and that says that if you remain repent Allah is going to forgive you otherwise you will be among the wrongdoer this is only uh, verse 11 and i wanted to do verse 12 but since we don't have time inshallah next time jazakallah khair sister noshini was very uh, beneficial talk you did mashallah may Allah reward you for that uh, i mean i wish we have more time then we can go on uh, inshallah, next time you can do the next verse. Um, sure. So, is um, Brother Louis, do you want to add something or you want to wanted to say something? Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khair. Brother Abed and, uh, and the sister. Um, well, if I have, if we have enough time, maybe I will just speak about one ayah or two ayahs. Okay, do you want me to open that ayah for you? Uh, yes, sure. So everybody can see. Which um, one is it? Let me think. Um, okay, let's start with this one. Uh, Surah Al-An'am and Ayah, it's 82. Okay. Is the one? Yes. So, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala bayteen, wa sahbihi ajma'in, rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri, wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani. I will start uh, reciting the ayah in Arabic first and then in English, and then I'll say my comments about it. Uh, the ayah says, "Bada a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Al-lazina amanu wa lam yalbisu imanahum bi dhulmin ulaika lahum al-amnu wa hum muhtadun. And in English it says, and they, the security for them, those with wrong their belief makes and did not believe. Let me say that, I think that the translation here is not really good. So let me say it from the, from my app. Let me, uh, 
just a minute, please. Sorry. So the English here says they believe they who believe and do not mix their belief with injustice. So those will have security and they are rightly guided. And today um, there was a program by Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud. He's a, a prominent Egyptian Islamic thinker that he passed away a long time ago. And in a, in a, in a program, he talked about the viruses and um, he talked about them as none even they're not even considered a living uh, creature uh, they're li they're like uh, uh, they're like an like a sleeping bomb that's that can be in in an animal or can be in a human being without even uh, without even you know changing or, or or being activated but it will be activated by a, by an order of Allah, and so if if we all are afraid of, of viruses or microbes, we all we every day we get tons and millions of them while we are eating, while we are shaking hands, while we're dealing with animals, while we are you know doing our daily basic activities, we're get, we're getting a lot of viruses and microbes, and so. It's not about, uh, you know, uh, getting contagious by someone else, but how the first uh, case of a human being was actually activated. And that is, is the order of Allah. And so if, if we believe that the order of Allah activates the first virus and then it becomes contagious, then it spreads everywhere, you're not afraid of, of the virus. You're afraid who, who gave the order for the virus to be activated because the virus is just a soldier. Yeah. And, and the solution, as, as Dr. Muhammad says, is, is only the, the feeling, of, uh, the feeling of, of being scared. And you only want to feel secured. And he said the solution for all the viruses, because... If you are afraid of this virus and you survive, but you did not solve, you did not treat that feeling inside you, that means that you didn't even pass the test. There will be another test again, and there will be another test again. And so this test compared to the tests before us, so we heard about what happened to uh, the people of Ad. We heard about the people, what happened to the people of Thamud. We heard about the trials that happened to Pharaoh, but we did not experience something like that. And this time, subhanAllah, it's like, that means Allah wants to show us what happened even to, to those before us. And the only solution, as Ibrahim in this ayah was answering his people, that the only solution to feel secured of anything and not being afraid is to have a clear, pure iman from the dhulm. Here, injustice means shirk, the association of Allah. And the association of Allah is a very, very uh, like delicate thing because shirk, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, it could be like the deep naml that it's like ants crawling or moving in your heart you don't even feel it but it can come come at you it can creep in your heart it can creep in your iman mm. and so i think it's a chance for us to uh, to go back inside and to imagine every prayer we do as the last prayer and imagine that we are, if we're going now to allah what are we going to say about our prayers what are we going to say about if we feel our iman is growing, our iman is, is becoming stronger, then the security Allah has promised will come, with, will come inshallah to us. And with that feeling of security, exactly what happens to Moses when he was with his people in front of the sea and Pharaoh is coming at, at them. And while all the people with him were, were disappointed, the spirit of any solution, he did not despair and he said, Kalla, no. 
And we say, even if we say all the people around us getting sick and people are dying one after another, and we will say no. It doesn't mean that we're going to stay alive, maybe. I don't know, some of us will not. But that doesn't mean it's the end because dying is the beginning. It's not the end. But you will feel safe. You will feel secured. And that's what you want, to be firm. When you live, firm. When you die, firm. When you are resurrected, firm on the Surat, firm in the Mizan, in the scale, firm when you enter the paradise. Mashallah. That's, I think, uh, maybe enough for that. That's very uh, enlightening. Um, so, uh, all my brothers and sisters, I think uh, the floor is open for you. You should say a sentence or two. It doesn't have to be about Quran. It doesn't have to be about some verse. You can express your feelings, uh, your inner feelings. You can give us a word of uh, hope or anything you want to share because let it out. We want to heal together. We want to feel connected. And we want to have this sense of community with all brothers and sisters in Islam. So please go ahead and feel free to uh, say whatever you want to say. We'll have another 10 minutes and then uh, we'll call it a day, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, brother Abid. All the group there. Ji, uh, ji. My wife had a question. Homa. Yes? Homa, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. I would like to know from this brother, Louis, the last person. He said yes. something about Hazrat Ibrahim salam. Could you could you repeat that thing? What did he say about the Ibrahim salam? And okay. second thing is from where he got this uh, explanation. He 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 said some kind of a scholar. Uh, he heard from there today. Uh, something like that. Could okay, you explain brother, me that, please? Brother Louis, did you get the question? Yes, yes, I get uh, the. So I, I, I made two two points in the same in the same in the same one. The first one, this ayah, if you go back a little bit like uh, one verse before or two verses before. Right, this one. No, this uh, eighty one. Eighty one? Okay. Yes, eighty one. Right here. Yeah. So now Ibrahim is in argument with his people and uh, while he's inviting them, explaining to them the meaning of Allah, the meaning of Tawheed, they are actually arguing with him and making him fear the, you know, the, 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 the Aslam, the, the gods that they worship. And he's telling them, you argue with me without even having any knowledge or any book about what you say. And you don't afraid, you don't feel, you don't feel afraid from Allah with all the knowledge and the book that I give you. Who is, who is deserving of the, who is the deserving to be secure? And so that's the next verse, which I, uh, which I said, Aladina Amanu. So, so in answer, what you're saying, the, the reference of Ibrahim alayhi salam is coming from the Surah Al-An'am. Because he was talking to his people and they were arguing, they were having a monazara, and yeah. he took only so one. That's the, that's the context of the verses. But the yes. Dr. Muhammad said, you know, like, ex, uh, took that as a reference for mm -hmm. whoever wants to feel secured at at any um, any uh, point of time, yeah. Yeah. at any point of challenge. Yeah. This is the prescription for feeling secured. As Ibrahim was, uh, you know, thrown to the fire after that. But his belief because of purity from any shirk did not change even while he was thrown to the, to the plague. So you're saying a person is free of shirk, will have the true security in their heart because they have nothing to worry about. In so many verses, Allah uh, said, even the people facing the adu, the army, mm -hmm. some of them scathed and some of them have, because of what happened to their hearts as a shirk. Mm -hmm. So some, some scholars will argue that a person with, with firm belief will not even feel afraid facing the army right. in the battle. Right. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Did this answer your question, Brother uh, Majid? Shukriya. Thank you. Shukriya. Yeah, I think that that's fine. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, I think the key message is the ayats. Uh, there is a command here. Yal bisu imanuhum bizulmin, isn't it? So mm -hmm. do not mix 
your faith with injustice or wrong. The wrong, yes, you're right. Uh, and as, as Brother rightly said, that there are quite a few manifestations of wrong, and the key one being the shirk. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Definitely. The shirk is the bulma nafs, that injustice to yourself is the shirk, the association of, of anything to with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, true that you, the moment you sort of deviate from Allah's uh, sort of line or put an overlay on his words or something else, isn't it? Which I've seen, honestly, so many sort of divergence in so many sects and all that. And all they carry different beliefs and to the extent that they move away from uh, or they would rather sort of bend Allah's words and get to their own mythology of that particular sect uh, to rule. So certainly that's a warning shot, the shirk. So thank you for that. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Anybody else? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Um, My name is Mandish. I'm a Muslim convert. And um, I was really, um, the last point that the speaker made, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to quote, imagine every prayer we do is a last prayer. If we feel our man is growing stronger, then the security Allah has promised will come to us. Do not despair from the people around us getting sick. We may not stay alive. It's not the end. Dying is the beginning. Mm -hmm. The point that you said after that, I didn't hear. You were saying something about to feel firm during our enti entire journey from this dunya right until we reach Jannah. Is that what you were saying? Just so yes, I, I, I just uh, randomly mentioned some of the stations that we will have in the journey, uh, starting from you know the time of the angels coming, uh, the time of death, and then the time of resurrection. The time of being in front of Allah with a scale, scaling your work, scaling your deeds, and the time of being on the Sarat, the straight path on, uh, on the top of hell towards Jannah, and in the time of, being, of, of entering the Jannah. Yes, Jazakallah khair, sister. Sorry if I'm not correct. If no, not... That, thank you. So the test will continue on and on. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Yes. Yeah. This is, uh, I, I find this very, um, you know, pleasing that mashallah everybody is participating and this is the intent that we should learn our deen together and say what in, the, in our hearts and not worry about it and is there anybody else who wants to comment or say, share something with us please don't be shy i just want to make another comment uh, so this command so not to sort of uh, mix your belief with the wrong and if you do that, effectively, you're not walking the talk and you sort of turn into a hypocrite or munafik, isn't it? Which is the worst category Allah has identified for anybody. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a, something to sort of really uh, focus and try to um, do self-evaluation and as much one could get back to the line. Jazakallah khair, brother. The time, isn't yeah. it? Anyone else, please? Um, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Brother Abid. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I just wanted to uh, just um, remind us of uh, two or three du'as uh, concerning mm -hmm. these topics. Yes, please. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Sister Zahra for uh, your own. It's very Thank you very much for sharing with us and uh, brother Louie. Louie, Louie. Uh, I thank you very much, especially for what really hit for me was uh, your reminder of the fact that uh, th this virus has been in our, in probably a human or an animal system all this time. And it was just the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has activated it. And that is something very profound that I just learned from you. Mm -hmm. And it's really brought uh, clarity for me. Jazakallah mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to remind us of this dua. Um, the dua says, Allahumma arzuq nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayrun man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha. This is, it just says, Oh Allah, grant my nafs, you know, myself, 
my soul its own taqwa, which is like the ability to continue to do right, to pray, to fast, to do everything. And, uh, and in the way uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would want us and that uh, we should all and and to ask and that we should always be aware of Allah and conscious of him and um, I'd, I'd continue to to um, to do good even in adversity uh, in our actions and in our actions when we are sick and in private and in public Mm -hmm. And also another dua which says, Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa min dhurriyatina qurrat aynun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. And this dua basically uh, uh, is, is, is asking, uh, is us asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us from our, uh, our spice, spouses, our uh, spouses and our children um coolness of the eyes which means that they they um can they continue to strive in the way of a muslim and iman uh, as we have and to make us uh, an example to those to our to our family and those around us uh, so that we can continue being uh and uh, and muslimin and striving towards uh uh uh, the, the, the righteous uh, path. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, just like Allah Okay, anyone else? Muhammad, you said that uh, Brother Louis was saying. What is the name of that person? Yeah. Doctor? Muhammad? Uh, Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud. Dr. Mustafa Mahmoud. And mention Mustafa, Mustafa Mahmoud. Mahmoud. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we can, we can see him in uh, YouTube, you said? You said he passed away, right? Uh, yes, he passed away. He was a prominent Egyptian uh, Islamic thinker. But his, his thoughts, you got it from YouTube, from his lectures? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, both brother and sister, especially talking about that Hujrat, Surah Hujrat, she talked about very well. Thank you so much to no, so much inspiration. Yeah, that was, that was Sister Noshin, just to correct the name. Uh, that was Sister Noshin. She talked about the Surah Hijrat, right? Right. She was, uh, she's, mashallah, a student of Tafsir with uh, the Dr. Farad Hashmi. She's uh, doing some course. And that's why I invited her to enlighten her, uh, us with the, the, the Tafsir. But we, she didn't know that we have only limited time. But inshallah, we'll allow more time to her next time. Yes, uh, Brother Abed. Uh, uh, more uh, what you say Quran with Quran because Quran is Tafsil al Kitab, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, so what's instead of Tafsir, if we get into Tasfir, uh, what is called Tasfir, mm -hmm. then uh, you relate ayahs cover to cover on a point or other ayahs to understand uh, an ayat or whatever the words coming into it. That gives a more um, sort of Quranic view and Allah's words prevail as opposed to us or people putting their own words too much uh, or quoting too much from outside. So as we are doing this, inshallah, we are not scholars, so we're learning and inshallah, we'll fine tune as we go along. Uh, but yeah. the good thing is I see more people coming forward and we want to encourage that. And then inshallah, as we move, we fine tune things and we make it more appropriate. Um, for the next time, so inshallah, the next halakha will be on uh, Monday. And as Maghrib is moving uh, ahead, so we'll install, inshallah start at 8.30. And then uh, we'll, it looks like it um, by the time we finish talking is one hour. So we'll make it from 8.30 to 9.30. So for next time, if some brothers or sister wants to share some knowledge with us regarding Quran, uh, they can forward me the request and then we can assign two or three people to do what we did today. Mm -hmm. Like we, we took three people and we uh, shared some knowledge with everyone. So if you feel like sharing something next time, please send me a WhatsApp a message and then we'll take it from there. If uh, no other further um, uh, comments, then inshallah we can uh, call it a day today and uh, may Allah reward everyone who participated. And we should continue and keep it, keep it up and add more people to our group. And we make uh, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts our uh, humble uh, effort here. And then grant us the peace and the tranquility. 
and and keep our hearts uh, steadfast on iman and give us the true iman and fix our intentions and then we learn a lot from this situation and we return to him sincerely and we once for all we fix our uh, affairs and we seek his forgiveness may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our uh, good deeds amen amen assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh jazakallah khair brother wa ya